Revolution 96.2, the Dave Sweetmore Sunday Club, a guy called Gerald Voodoo Ray. Now, my next guest, I've not even spoke to him on the radio yet, and there's a lot of love coming in for him. I did mention before we played that tune, if you were into any of the nightclubs or you were into any of the house music scene of the late 80s and the 90s, this fella will be no stranger to you whatsoever. It's an absolute honour and a pleasure to have him joining me in the studio today, Mr Jay Weirden. How are you, Jay? I'm all right. I feel a bit shy now after that introduction. You're not shy. The way you've been in here for the last half an hour, you're not shy, fella. I know. Listen, you've had... An, an amazing career. You're going to be doing a, a hippos reunion, which we'll talk a little bit about later on. But you know, I've just I've mentioned some of the things you've done there, and mm. you know, I mean, Sasha, massive, massive name. Mm. She like named you as an influence on her air, um, the air drawn dagger album. Yeah, that was his first album. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you've got people like him, you know, name checking you and stuff like that. I've got to ask you, what has been the highlight of your career as a DJ? I don't know. There's been there's been so many. I mean, I, I think I was lucky really to be sort of born in that sort of era of sort of when dance beat music first started. I, if I'd been born later, I wouldn't have sort of experienced it the same as someone starting off DJing now. Really, it, you, if you're at the forefront of a scene or a music revolution, you you're partly lucky, aren't you? Really, because you, you you're one of the first sort of people to sort of. Um, be a groundbreaker really and i was like a hip hop dj uh, you know when it first started off and you know really into black music and went to a lot of you know black venues black you know black clubs when when no one was going to that i mean i was sort of people thought was strange from the area that i was in being into that sort of music uh so um the highlight uh the thunderdome club and doing the blackburn race really with a highlight because you felt like you were you were part of something you were part of something that no one else had ever done you, you felt part of that select club almost like you know the mods and you know and the rocker sort of revolution you know rock, rock and roll when it first came out you, you just felt like you it wasn't just a, a music you know it wasn't just in music it was your whole your whole life one of the things i want to pick up on there what you've just said is you said like you were part of something that was happening you were part of a generation did did you realize at that time how important it was going to be and did you realize you were the part of something or was it just just how it was at the time? It was just how it was, and I, and, and I never thought I was this big, you know, DJ, and I was this, I just felt, and it was very sort of punky, you know, everybody was part of the scene, really. You you were all part of it. I wasn't the DJ, I wasn't the man aside. We were all part of this collective, really. And when it's when you look back at it, you realise, hang on, that was a bit of a, an era. Oh, it was, I mean? it was amazing. When I look back on it, I, it, it's almost surreal, you know, how good and... and, and and I have friends who were like even three or four years older, five years older, and and they miss that, you know, that that special time. And it even sort of, as it got towards the end of the sort of hippos era, really, something had, had, had changed in the music scene, you know, because at the start it was it was just so unique, and and the sort of people that you were getting in, the sort of people, the club scene changed. There was there was no more fighting and. There was no more trying to cop off with girls. It was just everybody was going in and dancing and just and expressing themselves and, and, and having a good time. And there was no, no one was trying to be anybody else. They were just actually being who they really were instead of, instead of trying to put a front on. It's a beautiful like. thing, that, it isn't is, it? It's when it's got, yeah. for the music, you know. Yeah. So, you know, you say you're into hip-hop and stuff like that. What yeah. made, you, made the transition from hip-hop into the dance scene? Well... The, the house scene, I don't really sort of, there wasn't that much music out anyway. And even when I first started doing the Thunderdome, there wasn't probably even enough music to play all, all night, you know. And and that's why I've still got quite eclectic taste, you know. I still like dropping, you know, all sorts of, you know, random stuff in, in my sets that aren't necessarily classed as house music. But with a hip hop thing, I just, it was just a natural progression, really. I think to be able to, to dance to the extent and to, to create the atmosphere that you can create in with with house music and and, and you know the way that you can layer stuff uh it's a bit more staccato hip-hop there's a bit more, it's a bit more and it's easier for white people to dance as well <laughs> hip-hop you've got to be able to dance <laughs> you can just jump about like a nut at a house music <laughs> without realizing you were obviously making quite a name for yourself you know when when sasha named checked you as an influence did you know that was happening or was it just a case of he brought his album out and it was like... I didn't even know. and I didn't even know, really. And I'm quite uh, humble, even though I'm, it sounds funny saying humble, but I don't really think of... 
you know, people sort of speak to you or if I'm walking down the street and someone will just suddenly, my daughter gets freaked out, you know, someone will stop me in the street or something like that. And uh, I don't, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't really, all I've been interested in is going out and playing music in clubs, really. I haven't really uh, thought about it, you know, in that <laughs> way. When people tell, or someone will send me, you know, like I'm in a book or something like that and, you know, there's a couple of paragraphs. I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't even really feel like me you very much kept your feet grounded. You I can just want to tell that. I just want to play music, really, and and I, and, I, and it's really important to me, you know, the music I play. As I'm talking to you now, I'm not lying. I'm looking at the machine and the amount of texts and tweets that are coming in. A lot of love for yourself and a lot of love for hippos as well. You know, a lot of people, a lot of memories coming back while I'm sat here talking to you for people. Well, yeah, it was a special special time, and, and we worked so hard. I mean, I, I haven't really spoken about Colin Bolter, who, who I did it with, and the reason why. Our night was called Clashes because we were, I, I thought of the name because we were such a clash of personalities. We didn't just call it some stupid, you know, like uh, evolution or something like that. It, it really had a real a meaning. meaning. Yeah, because Colin was like this super smart um, businessman and I was like this hippie idealist, you know, who was into music and, and just wanted to, you know, the pure essence of it. But Colin wanted to package it and, uh, and make it, you know, a, a product, but was also sort of a good product as well, really. You started in 1988. You're still obviously very, very passionate about the music, but oh, you've yeah. had a few years off. What made you take that time out? Uh, well, I, I had a family, and, and 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 to be honest, it's hard to, to stay in the music scene day in, day out, really. And one of the things that stopped me was the... was the in the Manchester club scene, at the time that I sort of stopped, there was a lot of trouble, you know, with the gangs in Manchester and stuff like that. And I was promoting and running my own nights from being 19 till 23, 24. So I was running all the doors and everything. And you can imagine a young lad having to to, to work with door teams. It's quite it's quite scary, even though, you know, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm not from uh, an affluent area and, and you know, and, I, and I've, seen plenty of things it's still you know very hard working with a door team and and, and the trouble that was in Manchester it, it sort of it, it put me off really and, and 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 I think sometimes I think the the I didn't want to be Joe Bugner really if you know what I mean K or carry on f fighting when I shouldn't be when I shouldn't be fighting I'd have ra I rather wanted to go out you know when uh when I was at my prime really I, I, and and now it's when I do gigs I only do like the odd gig because i enjoy it really i don't want to do week in week out and do get offered loads of things but i just don't just want to do things that feel special to me when you look at the scene now the the, the culture the clubbing culture the dance music scene yeah how do you feel it's changed it, in some ways it's really good i love all the technology the stuff you can do i mean you can make i mean the stuff i you know if i was in a pump now you know the music you can make on the fly it's so creative what you can do I mean, pe people, I get this digital vinyl debate. It just makes me laugh because when you're on a dance floor and you're having an amazing time and the music's sounding brilliant, you don't look up and go, and everybody, I'm actually <laughs> looking into the corner now. <laughs> you don't look up and go, oh, he's, he's, he's not playing on vinyl. You're listening to that music, aren't you? You're not listening to it. And also when you get the sort of damage that you get with records and the bad sounds, someone's not spent weeks, hours, days in a studio wanting you to wear pops and crackles and, and jumps on a record. And the, and the things that you can do now musically, I mean, are just amazing. When I play uh, on the controllers, the, the sounds I can create and the loops I can do and, and, and the seamless way I can mix in key, it, it's just so much better. So even though you've kind of like been out of the DJ and seen a little bit, from the extent you were, you've continued moving forward with the technology. I'd say about five years ago, six years ago, I started getting asked to do gigs that I fancied doing because people had also sort of got older and they were taking the children out because the children were at an age where they could go out with the children. So the sort of, sort of people who wanted to book me um, were, their children were going out, which which is really nice. And I, and I spoke to you previously about uh, Antwerp Mansion. I played there and, and it was an amazing atmosphere because it was kids of 19 and 40 odd year old, 50 year old, old farts really, I can say <laughs> farts can't I, on a Sunday. 
Before we talk about the gig and the reunion you're doing, uh, obviously, like I say, there's a lot of messages and stuff coming in. I've, just there's one I want to pick up on here. Uh, something about an ambulance. Ask him to tell you about the story <laughs> about an ambulance. Well, we used to have a, an ambulance um, at Hippos. We used to go in the old days when you could still give out paper fly, fly posters because people would actually uh, read them, no matter, even if they were in the state. So we used to go and hit all the different clubs, you know, to promote the nights we did. We, we never stopped promoting, me, me and Colin. We did all sorts of amazing things, but one of them was the Hippos Ambulance, and it was a beautiful old ambulance that was from Phillips Park Hall. <laughs> it had leather seats in it. It was beautiful. Uh, and we had Hippos, I think we either had Hippos or Clash on the front where the ambulance was, and Colin had put two big speakers on the doors. So we'd pull up to a club, where we, we'd go to, uh, one time I remember we went to Toxteth, there was a club in Toxteth, God it was rough, but it was alright because we were all City fans. Um, <laughs> so we opened the doors and then you'd blare the music out and everybody would look and see this ambulance and music blaring out and they'd come out and they'd be, it, it was brilliant, it, was, it attracted them, so we'd just give the flyers out. So, it, <laughs> so that's where the Hippos ambulance, it was just a fantastic vehicle and a, a really good sort of way of... Uh, Getting our message across. I've got to ask, what happened to the ambulance? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I don't know. You've not still got it then? It's not in your I, back garden. I really. would love that ambulance, yeah. <laughs> anyway, listen, I really appreciate you know the stories and you taking the time out, okay. Jay. But obviously you are here to tell us all about uh, a reunion you're doing. It's going to be at Bowlers on Saturday the 30th of April, which is what, two weeks away? It is, Something two like weeks yesterday. What's made you do it? Well, it's 25 years this year, and I don't usually get involved in promotion anymore. I just usually, you know, turn up, play my music, and then go home as soon as I've finished, and then uh, drink my cup of tea. But because uh, <laughs> it, it was 25 years, I really wanted, you know, because it's not every day, day you get to celebrate 25 years. It, it was a special club, you know. I, I always get, and, and, and the way that we ran it, and, you know, the way the sort of things that me and Colin did to promote it were quite... Uh, uh, unique really and, and a lot of people like the copied. ambulance yeah we did all <laughs> sorts of things we did uh play des o'connor in the queue outside to, to get because we had that many people there we we could turn like hundreds away so we used to play des o'connor to him to get rid of him outside <laughs> and we had like all the northwest granada reports we had all the national <clears throat> newspapers and one day i was watching tv here uh, and uh it was des o'connor on on and he was talking about it, it was really bizarre i'm just sat in my front room and des o'connor's talking to uh, talking about me uh you know a club playing his uh, music to the punters because they wanted to get rid of him. <laughs> so it, back to the gig um uh i just wanted to put something on really special really and i also had the idea of we didn't have lots of bands on we had like plenty of dj but a couple of the anthems that we had on were genocide too narrow mind and and i really wanted them to be on and the trouble I, nobody's ever really had them on chris bones who's a producer he, he lives in new york now i had to hunt him down in new york it was so hard i actually managed to get in touch with him he was such a nice guy he'd lost touch with the the mc the the guy who's like the main vocalist on it who's a, a ragga toaster uh, he managed to find him in dent in De i was gonna say denton in <laughs> devon <laughs> a bit further than denton in uh, devon so we've got genocide 2 on doing narrow mind and i think that's the first time in manchester you know they've ever performed uh, we've got blacks posse they don't perform that because aston harvey's one of freestylers so he goes all over the world now he's in canada at the moment touring uh canada but he's qu coincidentally just starting to release some of his old blacks posse stuff now so he he's playing he, he's absolutely amazing it does sound like it's going to be an amazing night at the Hippodrome, 25-year reunion, uh, Saturday the 30th of April, 10, 10 o'clock till 5 in the morning. Uh, tickets are 20 quid. Where can people get tickets from? They can Jake? get them on Skiddle if they just search Hippos Reunion or if they go on Facebook and, and uh, search Hippos Reunion or if they add me on Facebook. I've still got uh, a few places for, for friends. It's <laughs> Jay Weirden with an E. Uh, it's not really weird one. It's weird, Dan. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, get that done and get to it. So if you do remember the old days, the old hippos days of Middleton, uh, and it weren't just being from Middleton, where people came from all over to it. Even uh, if you're young, come. Get on There's it. Pl There'll be plenty of young people there. 
Get on it. Saturday the 30th of April, 10 till 5. Uh, Hippo's 25 re uh, year reunion, Bowlers Exhibition Centre. 20 quid a ticket on Skittle and on Jay's Facebook. But listen, Jay, really appreciate you Thanks, taking babe. the time out to join us today. And, uh, you Enjoyed know, it, mate. Great stories there. Thanks. I'll see you soon, man. Bye. And have a good gig. Yeah, enjoy the night. Bye. Cheers.